Hey math people, sometimes we have fractions that represent a number that's greater than one whole. And we can do that one of two ways. One is a mixed number, like the one you see right here, 4 and 3 fourths. Another way is to use a fraction that's greater than 1. So we used to call those improper fractions, which just sounds rude to me now because there's nothing improper about them. They just represent more than one whole. Now, to be fluent in math, you want to be able to move easily between using mixed numbers or fractions greater than 1 to represent these quantities. So we're going to work today on how to convert between these two and understanding, well, exactly what am I doing when I convert? So here I have 4 and 3 fourths, and I want to be able to see this as, as just a straight-up fraction. Now, the thing to keep in mind is it's still going to be fourths. We are counting in fourths when we count this way. So how can we break down or break apart this mixed number and then put it back together as only a fraction? Well, let's do it the conceptual way so we can get our head around it, and then we'll see a quick shortcut. So 4 and 3 fourths is the same as 4 plus 3 fourths more. Another way we could break this down further is to take that 4 whole and break it into 1's. It's 4 1's, and then of course we've still got that 3 4th's hanging in there. Now, if we need to make this a fraction, that means we need to take any part that looks like a whole number, and we need to switch it to fraction form. So when we look at each of these 1's, we need to say, well, what fraction can we turn these into that we'll add easily with 3 fourths? Well, I'm going to want fourths because fourths is what I'm counting in for this particular number. One whole is the same as 4 fourths. So each of these one holes I can think of as 4 fourths. And of course, again, I've still got that 3 fourths that's kind of hanging off on the end. Now it's just a matter of counting Oh, that's a bad four. How many fourths I've got? Well, let's see. I've got 3 plus 4 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 fourths. Let's see if I can fix that. There we go. 19 fourths is the same amount as 4 and 3 fourths. All we're doing is breaking apart that mixed number into its fractional parts and then adding them together as one fraction greater than one. Now, the, the shortcut for this is one of those things that, I'll be honest, I learned to memorize it as a kid, but nobody explained this part to me that I just explained to you. So I'm going to say that right now you're way smarter and way further ahead than I was when I was a kid. Still, the shortcut can be helpful. So if I have 4 and 3 fourths, or if I have any mixed number, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply the denominator by the whole number. What I'm really saying here is I have four groups of 4 fourths. See my four groups of 4 fourths? And then the second thing I'm going to do is take that number and add it to add the numerator to it. So four groups of four fourths is 16 fourths. With three fourths more, there's our 19 fourths. All I've done here is what you just saw me break down here. Um, the breakdown shows that conceptual understanding, shows, hey, I know what's going on with these numbers. The shortcut doesn't really show that, but it does save time once you clearly understand what you're doing. Well, that's. But what happens when we're on the other side of this? What if we're starting with a, fra a fraction greater than 1, like 8 thirds? Well, that's clearly more than 1 because 3 thirds equals 1 and 8 thirds is more. Um, here, I've already given you an answer. Let's come at this a different way. I'm going to tell you right now 8 thirds is equivalent to 2 and 2 thirds. So the real question is, well, how? How can this be? Well, we can look at it 
we can look at it in a few different ways. Sometimes when I think about this sort of thing, I, I really picture it in my head. So I'm going to start with making some thirds. Let's pretend this is equal and that I'm awesome at drawing. I know that's a lot of pretending. Well, here I've got a third, a third, and a third in one whole, whatever it is. So that's three thirds. I'm going to need another one of these. Four thirds and five thirds and six thirds. Oh, it looks like I'm going to need another one. Seven thirds and eight thirds. And then I've got this weird part that I can, I guess, sort of ignore. Now, when I look at this, I can see that this is one whole, two whole, and then two-thirds more. So I can draw this out. Now, when you get into more complex fractions, you're not going to want to have to draw it out. Another thing I can do is break down my fraction greater than one and then put it back together, which is kind of what we just did with the picture. But let's see what that would look like if I take eight-thirds and I break it into unit fractions. So eight-thirds is going to be eight of these, isn't it? There's a four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. And then I can group them into groups of whole numbers. Let's pull the whole numbers out. I've got one, and I've got two, and then I've just got the that two-thirds still hanging out there. So there's my 1 and 1 and 2 thirds, which equals 2 and 2 thirds. Now, um, sometimes drawing it out is, is a reasonable way, and sometimes breaking it apart into these unit fractions and then grouping our whole numbers together is, is a pretty good way, too. Let's look at one more, one more way that is commonly used. If I have 8 thirds and I want to figure out the, the mixed number, I can also use division. I can divide the numerator by the denominator. How many 3's do I have in 8? Well, I have 2 groups of 3, or 6, and I have a remainder of 2. Now, we wouldn't say that 8 thirds is 2 remainder 2. That's old school. Um, now that we are in fifth grade, we are going to be working with fractional remainders. So I have this remainder of two. The question is two out of a potential of how many? Well, two out of a potential three, because three is the size of the group I'm making. So I show a fractional remainder of two-thirds. And again, I see eight-thirds is equivalent to two and two-thirds. Now, this is all easier said than done, but with practice, you can move fluently between fractions greater than one and mixed numbers and choose the best one to represent any fractional quantity that you have. Don't worry. Just keep working at it and don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to practice.